So welcome to another video of um, reading. This time I'm doing a kind of, yeah, it's not just my reading it. Partially though, because there's something that happened at the end of the video. I didn't record <laughs> the last part. But anyway, so it'll be like kind of like a break. There'll be like, it, it might look like three parts, but it's not. It's just because I had to record and there was a time limit, of course. Um, so, in any case, this is a reading for someone who volunteered to have their chart read. And I thought, oh, okay, cool. Remember, this is just natal astrology. But I kind of went a little bit, I digress a little bit in some parts. But anyways, I hope you enjoy. But uh, at the end of what you'll see with the person I'm reading, doing the reading for, there'll be an, an extra part. Well, it's not really an extra, it's just a kind of a replacement because I forgot to record what was there. So I kind of have to start over again with that part there. Anyways. Thank you. Um, it's going to be my first official recording, like as in like on posted, posting this on YouTube. And yeah. what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to share my screen. You'll get to see your chart, the cop. I don't think I sent you a copy. Did I send you a copy? Yeah, you did. I did? Okay. Yeah, so, yeah sure. Instantly. Okay, cool. So I don't know if you know much about astrology or at least the branch of astrology, which is natal astrology. I don't know. But um, yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Basic knowledge. Basic knowledge? Okay. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is... Where did you go here? Uh, sorry, one second. Okay, share screen. Which one is this one? Okay, there we go. You can see it right now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, I don't want to zoom in to or in. All right. So, um, you probably already know that basic knowledge is like the ascendant, uh, which is actually going to some markup here. Okay, so the ascendant is typically what people start with, you know, describing it. Oh, it's um, yours is in cancer. Why is it doing that? <laughs> okay, there we go. That's fine. Okay, so ascendant is where people start with. So Ascendant Cancer often means that you're, it's your mask, it's what you portray on to the world. It's kind of like your first impression. Okay. It's what you package yourself out to be, the whole package. It's, um, yeah, what people see on the outside. Okay, okay. okay naturally. And because it's on can, because it's in Cancer, it's on, um, projectiles people have a hard time reading you people okay. have, kind of feel like they we don't know this person there's something mysterious about them there's something very hidden but it could also be that you surprise people because you um what do you call this all of a sudden you get this sort of like oh they can do this like it could be with sports as well it could be anything active it could be anything you know, maybe that they've had that they didn't know that you are a deep person or an emotional person or have you're in touch with your emotions, you're empathetic, all of these things that are very cancerian, emotion based water. Okay, okay. Okay. Probably also that people might be surprised, they'd be like, Oh, you are very you can be assertive if you need to be, because it's very it's a it's a cardinal sign. So yeah. leadership, that's that kind of stuff. Um what else is there? Because it ties into your first house, because it ties into the first house. Um, it's usually not just impressions, but also possibly... Uh, how do I explain this? The whole... Like family is sort of like this important to you when it comes to your health. It kind of has a direct connection to your health, to your overall health, your body. Yeah, um, again, how you package yourself, um, your things you do, the, f the first things you get your hands on, like, um, that's not the right way of saying that, but it's like, like, 
first time things like what you things that you're like curious about like I want oh I'm starting a new thing I'm starting this I'm starting this it's like a venture it's like those kind of things that's the first house as well but usually when it comes to the orientation points you have right the the ascendant the deer right here okay and then you have your descendant on the can I say it? descent right here those kind of things and then the, of course the mid heaven right here those are basic orientation points so they're kind of slightly different a little different from the houses they're attached to so you got the first house right first house fourth house seventh house tenth house the tenth house right here sorry mid heaven is right here <laughs> i missed that i was like why is here where's the mc okay <laughs> so they're kind of slightly different they're kind of like the starting point they start you off in that direction but it still pertains to that house as well um okay so with your ascendant being in cancer oftentimes what happens is we also have to look into to one thing of course we have that thing we just you know interpret it we, we know what it is second we have to look into cancer's ruling planet do you know cancer's ruling planet no <laughs> it's okay the moon so what that means is that it affects how people perceive you as well you're not only mysterious but you're also kind of um, like dark there's a darkness about you there's a sort of they might see a certain sort of like Oh, like right now when I saw your picture, you have this sort of like, do you like kind of like risky, okay, risky sort of look? Do you like, do you like dark colors? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. So that's kind of that. There's, a, the people see that too. They're like, oh, he, there's a sort of an ominous sort of feel to him. He's not really that, like, you know, that's the, then the cute cancer the whole like ah i'm cute i i'm i'm very uh i'm very heartwarming it's very like i'm friendly no there's like oh there's a there's a scorpio t thing to it as well hmm. because your moon was in scorpio <clears throat> it affects that your ascendant um and it because it was also in the fifth house a lot to do well probably i'm not really sure about this one but ascendants people that you meet might be kind of like People who view you this way are kind of people you have romantic uh, encounters with. I guess this is the fifth house. Possibly children. P children might be like... I don't know. He's kind of strange. and He's like out of this world kind of thing, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So the, your fifth house is tied directly to how people see you and perceive you, your, your ascendant. Mm -hmm. Um... What else is there? Descendants. Mask. Um, it also ties into the descendant, which is which is you know shadow work. Yeah. Okay. So what happens is that because it's connected directly opposite of the descendant, what happens is that um, you have the same ascendant as I do. So okay. what this means is that because it's in Capricorn, your descendant. This is the shadow. This is the part of you that goes. You probably were raised in a family that was um, kind of aloof. Not really aloof, but kind of distant, very cold. They're very all about the procedure, maybe, or they're always about maybe too much success, yeah. maybe not enough success. Maybe it's the opposite. They don't. Um, or rather, the opposite is that that uh, they're too distant that they don't really. It feels like you did. They didn't really care about what you're doing, what your successes were. They didn't care about. Uh, it felt like that. So you, so you had to kind of just take care of yourself. You had to kind of hide things. You kind of had to go. Mm, I don't know what I want to show to people. I don't know if I should be open. I don't know if I should open my heart, you know, to others. And so that's probably what's probably happened. But we also have the fact that you had also Venus conjunct your descendant. So 
Mm, a lot of um, it ties in directly to relationships and how you feel you perceive or you value yourself in terms of like success or where you're going in life or you're headed, how you tie your emotions to your, your, your sort of identity, how you package yourself to the world, again, back to the ascendant, descendant. Okay, so relationships to you kind of feel like they have to be a sort of a certain way. They have to be like, uh, you have to have commitment. They have to have discipline. They have to have order. They have to have all those things that are very Capricorn. But tying into Venus there, it kind of enhances that descendant. Your relationship becomes a sort of like, yeah, you take, th you take relationships seriously because you didn't have that especially when you were like growing up, you didn't have that, or you probably, right? So it ties into that. Does that, does that kind of feel close? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it is, um, I say, uh, unfortunate events that, um, yeah, made it, uh, I was, uh, I was, uh, the, the place where I grew up, mm -hmm. where, uh, I say, uh, m high criminality. Ah, okay. And, and my uh, father was police officer. And all the gangsters, or all the criminals know that. And I went to school in the, the school was in the center of that area. And uh, he arrested many of these people. So oh, okay. uh, they put vengeance on me. So I had a real tough time in school just from starting first class. And uh, they were bullying me. Uh, and it was not like, you know, a few. It's like everyone. And, and uh, uh, I say... Uh, like this was, uh, you know, like I couldn't go anywhere in the city without, you know, looking after my back or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it, if some gangs were somewhere, they hunt after me. And yeah. Uh, yeah. this uh, this all affected me in, well, no friends because no one uh, dared to be with me because uh, they end up in the same way. Yeah. And, uh, I was, I was, I say, I was defending those, the other people that uh, didn't dare to defend themselves or that you know, was afraid. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and about family, uh, yeah, they were very success-driven uh, and goal-driven. And, mm -hmm. as you said, just... Uh, everything like in a certain way yeah in the best way like uh, no cheating no uh, uh, you know it's like uh, you cannot cheat your way to the to the top you have to have mm -hmm. to work hard mm -hmm. uh, yeah exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. okay like training drilling uh, so you're right in the way you expressed it okay. and uh, cool. yeah so okay cool thank you for sharing that it's yeah it's, it's that's what it that's what i'm reading here and if anything you if you there's anything you want to ask like question go ahead ask me directly i'm fine with that because it's like i mean this is i've been i've been technically studying uh, astrology for roughly over 10 years but it was like kind of on and off it wasn't i don't like studying studying i hate that i i like to kind of just roll with it and see where we go and kind of thing and then, so i always i continue to consult like my books i have books on it and because of like copyright stuff i'm not going to show what the book is well actually this is a book <laughs> but <laughs> um it'll be on youtube but anyways um yeah so i kind of just go with the flow Anyways, let's go back to this, and I want to kind of give you more, but there's a lot more, like, a lot more <laughs> to say. Okay. Um, do you have any other questions up to this point? Uh, no. 
Let's go. Okay. So go ahead and I tell you. Okay. So your ascendant, usually we'd like to also consider other planets that are aspecting. I don't know if you know about aspects. Aspects are the relationship of planets to certain points and, and then other planets as well. Or not planets, but like, for example, like the part of fortune, you know, if there's a planet attached to that, or if there's a planet aspecting the, sorry, the north house, or, uh, the north node right here. Okay, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So, but we'll have to see. So, ascendant, well, your ascendant was in 19 degrees. Five seconds, oh, five seconds doesn't make a difference, so don't worry about that. Um, I noticed that though you, you're you okay with like sort of being educated, but as long as it's kind of deep, or it's kind of like profound, or it's kind of, we'll go into that, I'll, 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 I'll show you what I mean. So you have your ascendant in, in 19 degrees, so we have to look at places where there are other 19 degrees, like close to that. So, uh, okay, mm, Pluto, I can already tell, Pluto square ascendant, there's no lines, you don't, you see those, those red and blue lines, those are aspect lines, but I didn't put, okay. I didn't put, all, I didn't put everything here, because no. <laughs> I'd be like, you see your chart, you're like, there's so many lines, right now there's already <laughs> a lot of lines, but if I yeah. had done like all of the lines, it would be like so messy. It'd be like, ah, it's so crazy. But anyways, <laughs> so, I understand. yeah, so Pluto was mm -hmm. square ascendant. What's, what is square? So squares means that you face challenges. There's a lot to work on. It actually, because of all the challenges, square is a scary aspect in astrology. People think it's like, oh, I don't want squares in my chart. I don't want squares. It's, it's, I don't like challenges. No, but it, it wakes you up. It keeps you it actually makes you more conscious and aware of what's happening. So, um, with Pluto being square to your ascendant, it also means that there's a lot of challenge that you continue to probably face today, up till today. Um, particularly with romantic relationships, um, being yourself, a children, uh, anything to do with sort of maybe music, artist, artistry, anything creative. That's the fifth house, right? But uh, with Pluto being there and squaring your ascendant, it, the way you encounter life itself, or like, not life itself, but like people, when they perceive you, they not just only perceive you, they sort of start to experience it as like, it, it might be, there might be karmic stuff as well in there. So that means that um, because Pluto reveals, Pluto is the re the revealer. Pluto is uh, what what Judy Hall in her book in the Astrology Bible she <laughs> Bible she calls it the the use the misuse and the abuse of power. So there's power struggles that you probably come across like when you meet people the first time you don't know if you can trust them you don't know. Well, you didn't know you, you could trust them. They didn't know if they could trust you. They didn't know if there's who's in charge, who's in what kind of thing, right? Um, Pluto, and because of all your, you, you, we come from this generation. You and I come from this generation. Pluto, Libra, and Plutonians. We find relationships have to be, to be like, not perfect, but like absolutely like honest, like fucking like open. We come from that generation of complete change and like overhaul of what marriages are, what relationships are, what um, connections, even simple connections or communicating with people, sort of like communication, but more like relationships in general, but also how they become, what is the true meaning of a harmony, for example, that's also, come, uh, that's also comes into play. Harmony, things that are in, that give us a, not only sense of uh, pleasure or peace or harmony, but more like what is 
What is it? What does it mean to relate with others? What does it mean to have this connection? What does it mean to include everyone? What does it mean to be inclusive? You and I as one. Right. Uh, many people find that uh, when it comes to uh, Libra, the ruling planet of Libra till today is. I don't. Do, um, do you know what ruling planet means? In this case, I. Um. Know. No, not in the, in the, how it affects or what really, what really does or what to say. Okay. Yeah, ruling planet is just basically the planet that fits well with that sign. It doesn't mean that it's the only thing, like it's, but ruling planet of Libra is, till today, it is Venus, but it co-rules with Taurus. So, okay. But Taurus is more about the sensuality, the pleasure, you know, having, you know, the, it's a very stubborn, the most, it's the most stubborn sign in the zodiac. It's the most stubborn sign. But <laughs> Libra is not stubborn. Libra can be stubborn a little bit, but not that much. But Venus okay. isn't about stubbornness. Venus is about uh, sensuality, sex, not sexuality, a little, a little bit. Charm, it's about uh, pleasure, it's about just enjoying yourself in the moment. It's about what we value, what we're worth, things that we consider. It's like, oh, like when we see something beautiful, it's like, that's that. So Taurus is more like that. V Libra is like that, but Libra is more about the logic behind the beauty. Like what is beautiful, but at the same time, what does that make it about you and me kind of thing? So the other ruling planet that is speculated today, not sure, is Eris. I always put Eris with Libra. So what that means is that it does affect the Pluto. So we'll go into that afterwards because we're not doing Pluto right now. We're doing the Ascendant. We're talking about this. So, so what I mean by that, I just kind of wanted to touch base. I wanted to um, extend, to, by extension, I wanted to add Eris and Venus there to Libra because it gives that sort of um, how we like to be in relationships that we kind of test. We kind of like to be in relationships that kind of like, is it this? 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 Because we want to peel away because if you're Pluto there, our generation, we do that. We kind of feel like, hmm, hmm, is that, hmm, I don't know. It's not real. 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 So we kind of go, and Pluto wants to reveal that to us and say, you need to make sure that what you're going through, are you releasing any sort of karma that you've made? Are you releasing baggage from the past? Are you releasing all that shit that you like think is relationships? Like, because Libra is known to be in love with love. I love love. No, 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 no. Like, Pluto says, fuck that, fuck that. <laughs> like, just, just be true. So, and it'll continue to do that, especially with the. Uh, the square to your ascendant so you kind of maybe bounce off people often like bounce off you kind of like bouncing between people here kind of like okay this is not real this is not real so there's always that power struggle there's that sort of like if they are in control of you or you are in control of them it doesn't feel balanced right? there's no mm, okay <laughs> you know there's no more you and I it's just you or I oh. right? it's not you and I Okay. Uh, okay. So that's that's still a bit general, to be honest, of the ascendant and its relationship with Pluto, at least with the ascendant, and also your uh, descendant. Uh, what else? Nineteen degrees. Else? Ah, okay. Of course, we have Uranus here. So there's a flow between uh, the sort of changes that you go through with relationships. Because um, Uranus in Scorpio, you and I also have this placement. Uranus in Scorpio is very like highly intelligent, but in a very sort of, uh, when I say grounded, I don't mean grounded, grounded. It's like it has a sort of a deeper sense to Uranus. If you don't know this yet, but Uranus is um, the planet or the part of our psyche that is about that understands change. It is a generational planet, so there's a generation of Uranian Plutonians. Uh, sorry, Ur uh, Scorpio Uranians. Uh, that 
it's very it, there's a sort of we get our intelligence not from up there but from in here it's through kind of more like instinct um we have this ability to perceive things not just way ahead of time but like why we know how to dig deep into that sort of like what is what is that? What is what is intelligence? Is there more than intelligence? Fuck me, there's more than intelligence. Right? We go deep into that but outwards. <laughs> deep outwards, not this way, but outwards. It's um and we we're 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 familiar with those changes. We're kind of like, okay, we know how to deal with it, we know how to work with the the sort of I guess you can say the transformational power of Uranus which is like sudden changes, unexpected changes, the weird things, right? So you probably have weird relationships um, and you encounter them, okay, ascendant, you encounter them and you're like, okay, I don't know. Did, did, is that true? You feel like that's true for you? Mm. Like romantic but. relationships or relationships with children is probably weird. No, I... I think I have the issue with the relationships, actually. Um, not where, I don't know. I mean, people, I, I, children trust me and they, they have easy to connect with them. Uh, and uh, Well, you have your moon there, which is more, it's a personal planet. And also, so, yeah. relationship, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't say necessarily general relationships, but like what I'm talking about, when I say relationship, I mean the encounter of, right? Because we're talking about the sentence. It's like your encounter, or at least people perceive you that way. There's that power struggle, but they also feel, yeah, yeah. They also feel like he's really weird. <laughs> But weird yeah, in a maybe, good way. Maybe. Weird in a good way. They like the weirdness because there is a flow. Mm. Here we have this point to this point. It's actually a trine. A trine aspect is comfortable. Okay. Okay. But because it's comfortable, here's where it becomes funny. Trines and also sextiles aspects. They're very comfortable uh, placements or aspects. But what that does is that it. Um, it just makes us comfortable so much that it's like sometimes we forget this like, oh, what's this? Oh, wait a second. Oh, why didn't I expect that? Because that's what happened. So you're used to probably all those changes that maybe is probably the opposite where you're not, you get surprised by something that is a little more stable. Mm. Right? So relationships mm -hmm. become more stable. They're like, you kind of feel like, I don't know about that. <laughs> you know, because you do have Pluto also in your fifth house. So when it comes to actual starting relation, not just starting relationship, but like being in a relationship or even romantic one, no matter how long it is, five days, five months, five years, doesn't matter. It's, it feels like you kind of, there's a questioning of power. There's a question of who's here, who's in charge. There's a, you know, there's like, so there might be also baggage that you might carry. I don't know, but mm, at the same, I don't. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But I, I think uh, I am. I am. Uh, I don't like uh, when people ordering me or bossing me around. So it's like power. I think I. I prefer. It's like uh, equal somehow. It's like a balance. It, yeah. It's not like. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Yeah, there has to be. In, yeah, that's right. So <laughs> that ties into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Um, okay, I'll I'll have to pay attention to the time here because you have limited time. But well, I'll have to call you back because I have five more minutes and I'll call you back and then we'll start again because it's it's just just the way it is. It's Zoom, right? So. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Okay. No problem. Okay. So that's good. Okay. Thank you so much for having this time and for volunteering. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you call this?
Okay, what else was I talking about? Okay, Thank so yeah, there's a comfortable placement there. Yeah, go ahead. No, continue, continue. Okay, okay so... That's what I see here. So 90 degrees, 90 degrees, what else? Um, I was trying to, I was going to hope to get into this one, but 26 degrees... Hmm. What did you say about the comfortable, comfortable? Uh... Oh, right here, this aspect between ascendant and your uh, between Uranus and your ascendant. Yeah, it's like yeah. you're you're comfortable, most likely with the changes that happen. You're kind of maybe you're used to a certain nervous energy, so to speak. Like it's not nervous. I wouldn't say nervous energy, but like a sort of like. You sense that it's there, but you you don't necessarily feel the energy that is nervous. Because I do, I do myself. I have Uranus um, square my moon, so I sense it. I sense yeah, like I, I have like sense of, mm. but I also have I my my moon was in uh, Aquarius, so I'm very sensitive to sense. I have sensitivity literally to like external environments, like when something like unexpected change, when there's like a loud sound, like a thud. <sighs> But Uranus is the earth shaker. It's also referred to as the earth shaker. It's sudden changes. It's like, ah, oh, what? Yeah, <laughs> it's with a shock. People, places, and persons, like the energy and the energy changing on if dark energy or light energy or if right. uh, the people's, how you say, the people, uh, the, uh, their, um, the state of mind of people, I can feel the state of mind of people yeah, if they are nice certain, intentions yeah. or if they you have, have a, bad intentions. So. Yes, there's a potential for being psychic. There's a potential for that as well. Especially if you have like uh, Uranus in the water sign conjunct like Mercury mm. and also Moon. Mercury and Moon are like perceptive planets, perception. They're all about mm. this, 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 this kind of thing. But it kind of enhances it. But if you have Pluto there as well, conjunct those planets, Pluto, conjunct Uranus, conjunct the Moon, conjunct Mercury, those put together, it's like, holy God, like I can, and if it's in Pisces, Pisces is the most intuitive out of all the zodiac. Pisces is super intuitive. Uh -huh. yeah. So um, Scorpio is intuitive, but it's more down here. It's more to base. It's more in the lower shock. Uh -huh. base, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, so, yeah, um, yeah, okay. Um, like gut feeling. Mm -hmm, the, yeah, that's right. It's a gut feeling. So it's more instinctive. Mo uh, cancer is like that too, uh, but mm. cancer likes to uh, feel its way through things first before figure it out. Things. It's very. It's a very shrewd, like tenacious sign. The water signs are the two water signs. Cancer and Scorpio are very tenacious. Pisces, not so much. <laughs> But Pisces is flexible. <laughs> Pisces is flexible. Um, okay, so I did kind. I kind of wanted to talk about this one, but it feels like sextiles is not that important right now because it's um, it's also a comfortable placement. Your Saturn, this is actually uh, this right here is uh, Lilith. I'm not talking about. There's this is confusing. So Lilith is an as. It's a kind of um, aspect. Not really aspect, but kind of a part of the moon. Lilith was in history or in mythology was the first wife of Adam. You know, okay. Adam and Eve. Yeah. 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 But this one is not Lilith like the asteroid Lilith, which is not here. I didn't put it here. But Lilith as in like this is uh black moon Lilith. So it's the part of your soul that wants to be free and it's already kind of gone through this sort of, it's still going through the process in a way. I'm not going to go into that because I'm still new to Lilith. I just put it in there just in case. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes I do things just in case. Okay, but you do have, yeah, you do have Saturn here. So it's sextile your ascendant. So people might see you more like, what they can read more in you is definitely like, when they see you is like, you tend to be like hardworking, disciplined. You kind of are very serious. And that's the first thing they see besides this mysterious thing. The one that's more obvious is the closer, because Saturn is closer to us, right? The Pluto is farther away. Far, 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 far away. So what they see first is this sort of like 
you know, you have that potential to, uh, um, uh, sextile placements is about potential. Sextile placement is about what you can use that any for. And it's comfortable, it's easy to work with. So you can mm. easily work with getting to know people, um, the ascendant getting, to, expressing yourself in a certain way, and kind of, yeah. So it's kind of easy and kind of like, and you're, it's, it feels natural for you to have like the, what would you call it, long-term relationships, whatever the relationship is, or long-term yeah. friendships, long-term, those kind of things. So, so that's, um, I don't know if I want to jump into Eris there, because Eris is still kind of new in astrology. We just discovered her like, I don't know, a dec few decades ago, and it's still, it's still in Aries. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Eris is right here, right? Eris, right there. So, but Eris is like kind of like the discord. Eris likes to create chaos, so that it re refers back to balance. That's why I. That's why many astrologers find that Eris fits into uh, uh, Libra. And I don't know if you know this, but like every sign has its ruling planet, uh, but some have like co-ruling co-ruling planets. Like for example, like Pisces has uh, Pisces has uh, as a uh, has Jupiter and Neptune as its ruling planet. But its main ruling planet now has become Neptune because it's more Neptunian than Jupiter. Okay. So Eris might be the new ruling planet for Libra. So yay for me or us. <laughs> um, <laughs> for you, you already have a ruling planet for for Sagittarius. Right? Sagittarius is Jupiter, plain and simple. Yeah. Um, of course, there are other planets or body heavenly bodies that associated with Sagittarius. There are like uh, Pallas Athena is one of them. Where's Pallas Athena here? I do put it here. Pallas Athena is associated also is associated with uh, Sagittarius because it's about wisdom but it's higher it's a higher self wisdom it's from above it's when you download wisdom and that kind of stuff that's Pallas Athena in charts basically sort of <laughs> okay. but you're not your chart you are not your chart I am not my chart this is not about those things the charts reveal to us what's already here and what's already here, what's always been here, you know, time is an illusion, it's not real, you know, we yeah. actually, yes, okay, so, that's why we're in FTP. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Exactly. Mm. Okay, so, um, what else was there? So, yeah, I'm not going to go into errors, but I, I want to, but it's like, I don't know, it's really hard, but, um, yeah, so maybe the general thing might be that you maybe, uh, you get tested in relationships. Maybe there's some sort of like imbalance sometimes, and then we'll have to weigh it out. Um, but because it's in retrograde, maybe you feel this sort of like it's an inward thing. So you feel like, what's my role in this? How do I create this from chaos to peace? How do I work with that chaos too? How do I work with that discord, that imbalance, that sort of like, what about myself? Is it is it how I perceive myself? So that's the ascendant. Right? How I perceive myself. So when you kind of question yourself, oh, wait a second, what others think of me may not be what's right. Because that's just like, <clears throat> I need to perceive myself in a certain way. Right? So that creates yeah. a lot of chaos. And there's a sort of, uh, because Eris is still today in Aries, um, there, there might be that sort of battle. Even the first time you, when you encounter people or how you, package yourself you might come to, you might experience a sort of like struggle so to speak besides besides the whole like pluto thing as well so there's that as well. anyway okay we'll move on so ascendant and there's a triad that we usually work with not triad groups like triad <laughs> but triads like the ascendant the moon and sun um we'll go into the sun right now we'll do the sun um and it's funny because the ascendant is actually has what you call a quincunx 
positioning. But we'll get to that later. That's not that important right now. It's all about adaptation. So we'll go. Okay. Right now, we have sun in 23 degrees, uh, Sagittarius. And uh, conjunct Neptune, also in Sagittarius. Um, okay. So... Sun is the one that's most identified with natal astrology, but also what its identity. It's the ego, it's your your spirit, it's the more what do you call it, the objective part, not exactly logical, but objective part of the mind. Whereas the moon is the soul, is the subjective part of the body, the soul itself. So it's a little deeper, right? But the sun is also our identity, what we feel is like, what gives us energy, what gives us vitality, what makes us sort of like, ah, I want to do this, is what lights us up. Naturally for you, we know that Sagittarian suns are, um, you like adventure, you like, you enjoy, you get, you get, you get this sort of sense of like, mm, in, when you actually venture out into new things sometimes to the point where it's like you forget something in the past sometimes not always um, or maybe you go back into it it depends um, but you because you have Neptune conjunct the Sun you have a very sort of like this um, you like things that are mystical things that are like um, mystical mythical fantastic fantastical anything to do with the illusions and dreams of like the the ether realm and the, the kind of like spirituality and all those things you really enjoy that kind of, it gives you that sort of sense of not not real not just pleasure literally like it, it, your heart becomes it rules leo the sun is the ruling sign of, the ruling planet of leo right so yeah. it's it's about joy what really lights you up is that whole like you know anything to do it could be movies it could be the things that you do Maybe you kind of experimented with religions. Maybe you experimented with certain faiths or not just that, but like a certain belief or a certain spirituality or aspect of spirituality. So it, it, it you know, and you also know how to work with that because it's a conjunct. Conjuncts are like they work together. So, questions? Uh, no, I don't know. No, it's very good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, but because it's it was in the sixth house, so the sixth house is about your health, uh, your physical health, more specific health than just health health in general. The yeah. eighth house, which is the house house ruled by Scorpio, is more psychological and physical health. This one is more physical health, but has to do with your habits. The sixth house is about daily habits, your routine, the unconscious. Because you keep doing things again and again and again, kind of becomes mundane. It's like okay, 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 okay. So this is the cons this is six house has a lot to do with actual health, healthcare, medicine, drugs, um, uh, volunteering, things to do with work, not necessarily success work, but like work, labor, um, things to do with uh, service servitude it's ruled by virgo so but sagittarius rules your sixth house so that means it's more like it's free-spirited sixth house it's free you like sort of alternative medicine you like sort of like you kind of you're kind of like okay what's that what's what's this is there is this, this is there something else like, okay i think i so uh probably you probably get into sort of like disbelief sort of like um, so there's sort of sometimes you kind of question you don't know what to what can make you happy sometimes maybe it gets confusing it's like oh, I don't know I don't know if this gives me but you just kind of believe in it you just kind of just go with it because it's like it's sort of like fantastic it's out of this world it's it's weird and strange and it's like it's dreamy it's like there's sort of, sort of like I you know yeah and yeah. Probably like also like you like working with people that are of the same, I guess you can say, 
like the same feel, the same sort of beliefs as you do, same uh, ideals, okay? Uh, forgot the word ideal. Neptune is also about idealism because it rules uh, Pisces. It's always about idealism. So not exactly perfect, but yeah, beyond perfect. So you have perfect and you have beyond perfect. So that's idealism, right? So with the sixth house... I like to work with, mm -hmm. with people that, uh, that are more engaged, you know, or that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that you at least can motivate for the work you're doing, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. This Jupiterian rule, yeah, this Jupiterian rule, Sagittarius, likes to expand. It likes to grow and go out there and venture and venture and venture. It's nice to meet different type of, uh, uh, all kind of different people. Yeah, yeah you're always like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The one of the things about Sagittarius is like, you need to kind of be able to learn how to focus your aim. And not, not just like, shoot all willy-nilly like <laughs> that's one of the things you're learning definitely especially if it's about you know your vitality your own yeah your own strength your own um sort of sense of energy it's your spirit like if you look at the sun right? the sun is look at me i'm shining bright you got you guys all come to me kind of thing. this is why it's leo it's ruled it rules leo right so it's yeah. like <laughs> so with sagittarius okay. it um, you kind of also like to, yeah, probably the workplace has to be definitely active. The workplace has to be, uh, mixed with imaginary sort of things, uh, mixed with some sort of like, yeah, you can, you name it, like anything that's really, really like out there, really has to be really out there. Not necessarily weird, but it can be weird. It can, but depends. Um, but Here's where we, here's the rub, here's the rub. You have these planets, okay, square your Saturn, okay? So yeah. squares, yeah, so square Saturn, you know what squares are, there's very, there's challenges there. Wow. There's limitations with how communication, which is third house, how you ex maybe are able to express yourself. Maybe self-expressions to be completely free-spirited and fantastic and mysterious, all that kind of stuff. The illusions that you like to share, the dreams that you like, your idealism in the workplace, or people that you work with, or people that you, or even yourself when it comes to things that are, like, there's limitations with that. There's, um, you experience these, um, uh, yeah, limitations, you experience these, like maybe there's fears behind it. You don't know how to express your, to yourself and to others that it's like, this is what I want. This is what I really, truly want. Because, you know, when, when Neptune creates a, a veil of mysticism, it's almost like people can't, you, feel, you probably feel like in your experiences, like you can't really express yourself that much. They're like, mm, okay, I don't know. They, you want them to get you, but they won't because there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a mystery about you, right? Again, you go with cancer, right? So there's a mystery about you. So they're like, they can't, they can't really read you. So you have to work through all that emotional things that you go through and say, what is it that you need to, what is it that needs to be revealed? What is it? What is the truth, right? So Sagittarius is not only about adventure. Sagittarius also also wants honesty. Sagittarius is a sign that comes after Scorpio. Scorpio ruled by Pluto, right? So transformation. So Sagittarius is quite familiar with that. But sometimes Sagittarius wants to go out there so much that it's it's over transformation that it's like uh, I'm not I'm not dealing with these things. You know, you kind of just run away, you escape. Sagittarius likes to run away. Sagittarius. If it's uncomfortable, if it's not the way you want it, it's almost like, uh-uh, I'm going somewhere else, I'm going somewhere else, uh-uh, uh-uh, this doesn't give me, uh-uh, this doesn't give me energy, this doesn't give me vitality, this doesn't give me anything, you know. But sometimes Saturn is there to say, sit, relax, 
work through it. Walk. I will put limits on your life until you know how to work with those limits. Can you embrace the limits of things you face, especially when it comes to communication? It's in the third house. Oh, so fourth house, sorry. My mistake, that's why you're probably confusing. I mistook that. So, well, it could just still be selfless expression, yeah. So, family, sorry, I'm so sorry about that. I, th I mistook that for a third house because I'm so used to seeing the fourth house this way. Okay, so <laughs> well, a, bit of a, a bit of a reset here. So the this, this square there is the challenges with your own, ah, now I get it, your uh, inherited DNA, your ancestry, sort of like there's limits towards that. So maybe you experience a lot of things with, um, yeah, health issues probably. Most likely because you have sixth house placement there. You you probably lack energy. Um, the sun rules. Yeah, lately, but but uh, not for I I I have never I, I almost never sick, never have any diseases and. Uh, okay. Yeah, but there's definitely like. Well, hmm. Yes, okay. Yeah. No, yes. but maybe it's also. Uh, how you say, how you focus your mind or how you perceive reality. If you, if you, if you let yourself, uh, if you let yourself be sick, if you agree ah. to. Ah, okay. Like, uh, uh, it's a state of mind, you know, if. Uh, tenacity. Since I was, since I was, uh, very young, okay. I, uh, you know, when uh, when you were sick, your mother come like, oh, I have to go to stay in bed. Well, you know, I never never wanted because I felt like I was getting more and more sick, and instead I like to to get dressed, take a shower, and go out and uh, get fresh air, yeah. and I didn't feel sick, you know. And then I started to to adopt that, like. Uh, when I just, when I just started to feel like something, or when people, you know, in like, oh, everybody's starting to get sick now. Oh, soon, you know, I was like, no, I don't think I'm feeling. No, I'm feeling fine. I'm feeling good. Mm -hmm. And uh, even slightest, uh, you know, uh, like a feeling, you something is like in the throat, or you know, like feeling hot, or something. Like no, it's no, 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 and. Uh, never like never been sick mm -hmm. yeah there is there is sagittarius is known for its expansive belief and sagittarius is it, sagittarius exaggerates <laughs> mm. it, it goes beyond what it's supposed to be sometimes and that's why saturn comes right after jupiter and saturn mm. creates that borderline because wait a second don't expand yet don't expand yet so for you, that really applies specifically with your health and things that you kind of inherited. Your sort of like you're from your family, your roots, uh, where you came from. So, um, Saturn. I challenge you. Yeah. I challenge you. Try, try. If you, if you, yeah. But next time, if you are, like start to feel sick, some, some, if you feel like uh, running, you no, know, you really know something. Like, don't think like not even one thought you know if you start the thought mm -hmm. it's that you just quit it and that no 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 and never think that thought again about you being sick or like you feel like you're going to be sick and instead you focus on that no i'm i'm i feel fine i'm i'm good nothing nothing is wrong and uh, uh, try that and mm -hmm. you will be you will be surprised no, 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 I, I, I totally agree with you. Where is Jupiter here? Ah, okay, you also have Jupiter in Virgo, like I do. So, because you were born 1979, like 1980. So, it mm. makes sense. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, Jupiter in Virgo is what you call, like, it's in a... Because, okay, let's go back. So, we said earlier that, okay, Sun, Sagittarius, Neptune, Sagittarius, great, okay. 
because of that, because it's in Sagittarius, and Sagittarius' ruling planet is in Jupiter, is Jupiter, but Jupiter was in Virgo, um, you also kind of get, uh, you have a perfectionism, you have a, a, a perfectionist streak in you. You want yeah. to do things like, like when you have idealism, it's more like, oh, perfect idealism. Oh, perfect. Like you want, yeah. to, so you, you really believe you have this sort of like earthly sort of like grounded belief about yourself. Some people might think that Jupiter in Virgo is like, a, oh, no, it's not a good placement because Jupiter in Sagittarius is its main placement, right? It's called a dignity. Uh, means it's like it's really you know it's at home but it's exalted or it's in rise in uh pisces but pisces opposite sign is virgo so when it's in virgo it's in its fall so that means the energy of jupiter isn't that strong but because of your neptune here kind of like goes that's okay we'll go we'll still keep going we'll still keep whoa okay you transcend. Neptune is a planet of transcendence. Uranus is transformation, which is like sudden changes. Neptune is transcendence. So um, it tries to go beyond what's already there. It's like, okay, what's behind the veil? What's behind the veil? Let's see. Or let's cover it up and see. So Neptune is also uh, part of ourselves that we feel... Like we don't trust it. We don't, um, we, we trick ourselves into believing this is what it is sometimes. But but in a way, in, that's a good thing because that means that Saturn might put a limit to your own health and stuff like that. They say, okay, well, slow down, slow down. Because if you don't work with those, that, 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 that challenge, you don't work with that. So it, it makes you feel like one, one is too strong and the other one gets neglected. And what happens is this, you get sort of like this eases a certain weakness, a certain illness, so especially, particularly, I would say not only with your energy, but because Saturn rules the skin and bones. So there might be what is Saturn. Saturn. Okay. So Virgo. Um, where is Virgo? Okay. So something pertaining to the stomach area. Some, either with that or skin. It's something to do with that. Like there's a connection. I don't know what system that is. I'm not in medical astro. I'm not a medical astrologer, but something to do with that. But because we were talking about your son. And Allergy. <laughs> sorry? Not sorry? Allergy. Yeah, sure. So you have maybe some sort of digestive allergies or sensitivities? Hmm. Yeah, maybe... Like in your family, at least. Maybe not you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but... Uh, I think I was... But that was more than when I was young. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. Like a corn, tomato, uh, mm. grass. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, and Neptune, I believe, rules... What does Neptune mean? I'm gonna cheat here a bit. Sometimes I do cheat, <laughs> and because this is medical astrology, okay. I don't know much about it. But it's just mm -hmm. to kind of add to it, just for fun. What does oh, yeah. Neptune mean? Neptune rules, I believe, the nervous system, just like Uranus does. Neptune. Mm. Where's Neptune? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, it is a nervous system. So. Um, yeah, that's probably why when you get sick, you want to go out there. You have this sort of, mm. um, yeah, I guess your heart and your nervous system, the the heart area or the back, the lower back here, that's the sun, I believe. Mm. There's the sun. Yeah, heart, back, spine. So something to do with that. So watch out for those things. It's like when you... You know, because you, you probably carry some of that from your family line, right? So hmm. it's like, yeah. anyways, um, went into we went into Jupiter, so there's that perfectionist streak. Like I mentioned, oops, 
uh, right here. That's uh, called, but it also affects your uh, your Neptune as well. Let's see if the let's talk about the aspects. Besides the square, we've already done the square. So the other aspect. Oh, okay. You have a comfortable placement here. So sometimes you are able to use that plutonian energy to your advantage, which is yeah, it's it's uh yeah, it's it's sextile to both planets. So that means that you you have you have this potential ability to dig deep into what you really want, what you really enjoy, what gives you vitality, and to kind of, okay. By probably going to, um, do you do you get tenacious? Like, do you really work hard when it comes to anything athletic, physical stuff, recreational? Yeah. Yeah. Most things. Yeah. So there you go. You work with that. This is the thing you are talking about earlier. When you're sick, you're like, I don't want to. <laughs> like, you know, when Saturn places a uh, Saturn places a boundary on things, it means we have to listen. We have to listen to that. Otherwise, it goes. It becomes too chaotic. It's too Uranus. It's like it's not healthy, right? So Saturn goes like, okay, let's create this limit and say, let's stop here and then work through that. Okay. Uh, where else? Okay, and then we have the Moon. Okay, finally we have the Moon. So the moon, we already know it's in Scorpio. The moon is about sense, your senses, your sense perception, your um, ability to just sense um, your habits as well. Probably also eating habits, um, what you put in your body. Um, it's that hidden part of ourselves. It's like I say, it's the soul of the whole thing, of your whole soul. And it's yeah. yeah, it's it's really deep because it's like it's it rules cancer, right? Because it was in Scorpio, again we talked about that. You're quite tenacious. You kind of feel at home, okay? You feel at home and comfortable with romantic relationships or connections with you know joyful things that are kind of more on the darker side. So you probably have like I don't know if you enjoy dark humor, okay? Okay, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's Scorpio. Um, I don't know if you're into certain fetishes. If you kind of enjoy that, you probably experiment with that. You'd like to kind of be, you kind of don't want to also reveal things to people. You're, you're, no, I like yeah, no, I like to create my integrity. integrity. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, and because there's tenacity there, it's like, you know. It's, it's, you kind of just, this is the part of you that goes like, okay, well, like you say, you, there's one thing to have the soul, I'm uh, sorry, the spirit that is um, all about the energy, but the moon is more like, it's, it's more earth kind of placed, so to speak. It's, it's, the moon is your, it's what you kind of inherit not only from the family line, but you're also like, it's basically, yeah, like your DNA, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Like it's this DNA, your spiritual DNA, your physical DNA. It's like, that's kind of like the moon. It's all about nurturing as well. Not so much about physical nurturing, but more like emotional nurturing. Possibly also psychological nurturing because the moon, because it rules cancer and cancer rules the fourth house, therefore the, the nadir right here, it's your inner, inner, inner self. It's like the process that you go through that is about um, my journey, not just this, this life, probably in past lives as well. Right? So um, we don't need to go anywhere else. The Pluto's right here. So even though your moon is like in Scorpio, you still like to kind of like be you have a flirtatious side to you. You kind of like to be friendly. Relationships are still, you feel at home with connecting with people, uh, but in a real way, absolutely real way, like yeah. genuine, like cannot, you take, if it's not genuine, you don't go for it. Mm. Right? Okay. Probably why you're also an FTP. <laughs> but, okay. But, but there's a challenge there because you have Chiron and in retrograde, in Taurus. I have this placement too. 
9 degrees opposite of Chiron to your moon. So that means hmm. that your romantic relationships with your like your social circle, things come up again and again that remind you. Oh. Like you process that pain and woundedness in yourself and go, okay. There are probably friends that I've lost, or people in my life that I've lost. And you probably your your goals, your dreams, your aspirations into the future, what you want for a big society and yourself as well, how you kind of mix blend in with that, how you're part of that whole thing. You feel like it's you've experienced a lot of that. There's a lot of loss, there's a lot or at least you go through that pain because it's like it repeats itself because it's in retrograde. But because you repeat it, it repeats itself, it repeats itself, it repeats itself. You actually know how to work with that pain. But you have to kind of balance that with the moon. It's an opposition. So it's all about putting the two together and saying, mm-hmm. how can I work with my emotions so that my pain is to, not to my detriment, but to my benefit. To like, to grow internally and externally. Right? So that my relationships becomes real, especially romantic ones. Uh, yeah, social and romantic relationship doesn't matter. So that they become real, so that I will become more like my true self. Then the moon comes out to be like, oh, this is my Scorpio self. Fuck yeah. You like my dark side? Yeah, let's go with it. Let's go with the pain. Let's go with it. So this is probably why you also are open to probably exploring fetishes like s and m a healthy relationship like that, a healthy, um, trusting, completely vulnerable relationship. Hmm. What? (laughs) Yeah, okay. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So there. um, And Chiron is about woundedness, right? So it's about Chiron was a... People already know this, but Chiron who... um, Chiron was a, a centaur who mm. was immortal and he couldn't, uh, he got shot with an arrow. I forgot, I think his leg or somewhere, I don't know where, but he couldn't heal that wound, but he was immortal. So he couldn't oh. die from the wound. I'm sorry, he couldn't die from the wound because he was immortal. But So it's like the wound kept repeating itself, repeating itself, repeating itself. But he learned how to work with that and learned how to work that in service of others and of himself. Right? And finally, when he died, he lost his immortality. He died and he was able to release all that. He, 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 um, he, he, came, to, he came to terms with it. He was, with, he was at peace with the whole thing. Okay, okay. okay Chiron traverses, like, well, uh, passes by between Saturn and Uranus. Chiron is actually an asteroid, but Chiron represents in astrology the transition between matter, which is Saturn, uh, huh. things that we are afraid of, and change, transformation. So okay. Chiron is like that bridge between the two. It's like the one that says, okay, I have physical pain. Okay, we have this life, this three-dimensional life. How do I transcend that? How do I go beyond that? But you don't want to just escape towards that. You want to accept the reality of this life. You know, I don't know if you know Eckhart Tolle, but he talks about the cross. The, the, there's the vertical. I know it sounds very Christian, but it's like that vertical. You want to mix the vertical with the horizontal. The horizontal is this three-dimensional life, this being, this this here, with the transcendent dimension, which is like our true self, like our essence. But we cannot ignore and avoid and run away from <laughs> hint hint Sagittarius. Uh, <laughs> we cannot just <laughs> run away from reality. We have to accept it. So Chiron is also telling us that as well. Chiron is saying, okay. But you do have a comfortable placement with your Mars here. You have a trine to your Chiron. Mars in Virgo is very technical, very like Okay, perf- there's not just perfection, but there's a certain like you're not aggressive, but there is, there can be a little bit more like towards perfection, towards that purity, because Virgo is about purity. Virgo is um, 
it's not just knowledge, it's experience. It's experience, it's knowledge through experience. Virgo wants to touch, it's an earth sign, so it wants to feel, it wants to experience. This is why it likes to be of service to others. So, yeah? No? Okay, okay. okay. But, uh, yeah, but I think what you meant is like uh, uh, to keep, uh, I say, uh, like in, uh, when you said like, doo -doo -doo -doo, yeah. like in, uh, how you say, like in a perpetual in a order. Order. Yeah, order. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Perpetually yeah, like, order. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, in a certain, you know, like uh, a way of doing things, uh, like uh, systematic. That's right. You know, procedural. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. yeah. So that's what I mean by technical. It's like you like to be yeah. technical, specifically. Like that's also kind of like what you experience in your like growing up with your family, right? Fourth house mm -hmm. stuff. So they were very, like you said, they were very business minded or you said they were very kind of, but they worked, there was a lot of like hard work. There's a lot of work. You know, so the assertiveness comes through, which is Mars, is assertiveness. They're, the will willpower comes through hard work. So for you, you have this willpower to work through your wounding, your wounding of you. So it's like kind of like maybe you talk it out with your friends, maybe you actually connect with some of them, and maybe some of them you just let go, maybe. Okay, so with this one, again, as you probably saw, there was like a cutoff. Um, I didn't get to finish it, so here's the other part, the third part. <laughs> okay, so here's the um, chart, of course, as you probably already seen. And as I usually do this, I do it this way, you know, I... Anyways, the point is that with this one, we were talking, last we were talking about their Chiron. I believe that I was talking about Vesta and how Vesta for Carl was, um, uh, what do you call this? Is like a, there's a conjunction here, there's a retrograde here, so that means that the retrograde is an inner focus on inner, I guess you could say, devotion, inner purity, inner focus, and towards like the pain and the wounding that's experienced in the past, that probably still do, does, and there's a kind of, oh, what do you call this, a, uh, it's an opposition to the moon, to his moon, right here. So that means that he has to balance that. I think I've already mentioned that he had to balance it. And that there's actually a sort of a seesaw effect here because Mars is at the bottom of that kind of like that seesaw thing. And it just kind of like, he has to learn how to balance sensing those, um, what he experiences emotionally at a deeper level, particularly with romantic relationships and any relationships and directly up, um, directing that to balancing his general overall like relationship and hopes and aspiration towards those romantic relationships or even just like with children or anything that he enjoys because it's the 11th house to 5th house relationship here it's a balance but with Mars there it's easier for him to kind of go ahead with it there's a lot of optimism there as you can probably see there's or there's a trine here and in sextile i forgot what triangle this is but there's that shape as you can see but it definitely pulled there's a pull from uh there's a pull from chiron there and vesta that to balance that but with jupiter there as well it's like a it creates a lot of optimism so he might have to he might has to he'll have to um or carl for you you might have to not only balance it, but figure out where this sort of willpower is going to be expressed, how it's going to be expressed, because you have this sort of optimism that you grew up with in your family, fourth house, um, that you are able to just go get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, right? And then extend that over to your own emotional needs, your habits, your own, your soul journey, so to speak, and see that okay so 
even if I don't get that, that's totally fine. If I don't get the relationship I need, the nurturing that I need, that's something that I can fully trust and be himself with, then that's totally okay. He should go for things that are more, that don't, don't give him that someone who's willing and open probably also respects that sort of sacredness and that trust that he needs to devote his to healing. He needs to devote his time to healing. Right, it's an internal healing because it keeps happening and again and again, again retrograde in Chiron, and he needs to balance that with those ex those uh, emotional experiences he has with relationships, even with children. You know, figuring out that it's like it's not anyone hurting you, it's not anyone doing the damage. It's your perception of it. So being able to hone in that balance because you also have here Earth of Taurus trying to balance that sort of groundedness of Scorpio here of water right so it's the flow and then the stability kind of balancing them together and working with those elements and seeing that hey I can actually do this so uh, what else tech is there a Okay, I was wondering if there was a connection with, oh, Venus, I didn't mention this. Did I mention, wait, it's a Venus, is there a Venus? No, there isn't one, not for Venus. I didn't really talk about Venus in the video, in the recording, in the actual session. So I did, but it wasn't in depth, or at least not as in depth. Because you notice here that Venus is actually uh, square to his um, to Pluto so that means that there's a lot of relationship uh, power struggles and we actually talked a little bit after the session that narcissism yes makes sense narcissistic relationships because Venus is in the seventh house it's right at home and it's in Capricorn so there's a limitation to those things so that means that he's able to kind of work through it in a gentle but also in a very I guess procedural but also kind of like he kind of experiences it as it is and he's kind of um, distant with relationship at first when he meets people any sort of relation anything sort of he values he puts some sort of material practical approach to it and seeing okay this is probably what it is I'm gonna see where it is and I'm gonna not feel it but I'm gonna do practical things so that it might work but because of all that uh, power struggle you'll have to find a balance between that sort of gentle Venusian uh, um, I guess qualities not the astrological word quality but yeah sort of like it's Venusian want desire to desire to have relationships to connect to balance to harmonize to um, I guess you can also project right but it could also be that he's projecting, or Carla, maybe yours will probably be projecting um, some things that maybe are narcissistic but may not be. Probably because of this, you know, if you look at your uh, Venus, if you're looking at relationships itself, your seventh house is where we go to typically. And Venus would be, uh, Venus is your. Uh, what you worth, what you worth in yourself, and what you see in others as well. That's projection because it rules the seventh house, and seventh house is also to, to starts off with the descendant. So it's projection, it's shadow work. So it's because it's also like I said earlier in the first recording, it's conjunction. So you know how to work with that, but for mainly for yourself. But I think the shadow work that you need to process through is being able to dig deeper and to figure out. Why is it that is mirroring? What are these relationships mirror to you? Like, what are these saying? What are these saying to you and saying? Uh, uh, you know, it's like maybe the person just really is unexpressive. They're not willing to ex say what they want, but they're kind of, you know, they're probably think that they could use you. But you know, because nothing is really ever personal. It's uh, everything is neutral, and everything is based on our interpretation of it so nothing has meaning until we give it meaning right so 
this these narcissistic relationships, they could be, yes, intentionally narcissistic, or they could be not narcissistic. It just could be that they want to focus on themselves. So you feel that you find the gifts in that. When I when it comes to shadow work, I've always learned how to deal with that by sort of I yes, I've pointed fingers before, but then I now become it's become practice, it's become sort of a thing I'm used to where it's like, okay. If this person is narcissistic or selfish or egotistical, what part of that, what aspect of egotism, egotistical, um, narcissism, psychopathy, sociopathy, those kind of things, the Machiavelli, what kind of those, what kind of those things are, what what do they have? Well, isn't it confidence? Isn't it knowing what you want? Isn't it uh, self empowerment? So you find yourself you can find yourself in, you can in yourself in that you can discover that hey I have those qualities too the more you embrace that in yourself your narcissistic self you know you can do little practices like you know when you meditate when you do things you perp journaling even we talked about this on you know, doing things like that you want to be able to um, uh, accept those by practicing things like one exercise I picked up was um, mirror it's like a mirror exercise where you tell yourself I'm a narcissist I'm a narcissist I'm a nurse you repeat it you repeat, until the word loses meaning till the word loses meaning and what that does is basically subconsciously partially subconsciously maybe a little bit is that once you surround yourself with that accepting behavior and surrendering to that aspect that beautiful aspect of narcissism because now you figure out make a list of good things about narcissism what are the gifts behind us and then do the mirror exercise you'll find that it's like ah okay i can be narcissistic when needed in other words not necessarily narcissistic because that's extreme but i can be selfish if i need to i can uh, i can be sexy i can be controlling i can be uh, I can change things the way I want to. Instead of being manipulative, you change the things that to your benefit. The one that makes you healthy, feels you a healthy ego, gives you a healthy ego. Things that give you this sort of direction of like, oh, I, 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 I like myself. That exactly. It's self appreciation, self you know, gratitude. It's loving yourself enough and not too much, right? Because when we go extremes, those are this. That's the shadow. The extremes reveal to us what extremes there are or what means there could be if we repress or suppress one aspect of ourselves whether it's a good thing or a bad thing it's it's going to bounce off and it's going to go mirror onto people that's why that's that's the that's the phenomenon of projection right so right so you don't want that you want the three fingers okay i have one thing i'm projecting maybe use the finger method i don't know this pointing finger method find three good things about that thing you're projecting Someone's a bitch. Psh, someone swears a lot. Someone's even go extreme. Someone's a pedophile. Someone's uh, I don't know if you're hom if someone is if a person were homophobic, if a person was transphobic. What is it about that? Embrace that in yourself. And the more it's not about others. It's not about anything about what others do. It's about your own journey. We're all in this together, but our journey is the one we process is alone, and that's what Pluto teaches. Pluto teaches us to be, to work with ourselves, to things that we work on alone. But it's not really alone, is it? We're not alone. So alone in a sense, that in a three-dimensional sense, in this earthly sort of plane sense, this horizontal sense. It's like, you know, but trusting in that is like, oh, I can do this. So go with the guidance that you get from vertical and say, okay. And say, ah, okay, I can work through this. But you got that ability, right? We talked about the Saturn. We talked about those things. Um, but in any case, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So that's the Venus. There's that park there. Um, what else? Oh yeah. So going back to uh, connecting it back to Chiron here, up here. There is. Um, the third part that I was supposed to talk well I it was re supposedly recorded but it wasn't <laughs> was the your north node so we talked about this one the north node 
I'm not sure if it's actually in the second video, but I guess uh, it's worth repeating if it is if it is the case. So if I had mentioned it that the North Node is in Virgo, it's in three two degrees Virgo, right here. Okay. It's uh, is it actually? Oh, it's conjunct your fourth house, your Nadir. So I see Mumkweli is what it's called. Um, it's conjunct that. So that means that first of all. Let's go with something simple. So North Node is, of course, your where you're headed, things that you're uh, not ready to see, things that you're, uh, you know, that seem to be courageous about, things that the unknown, it's an unknown path. It's the head of the dragon, is what's called. You know, the the, nor the nodes of, no these are the nodes of the moon. This means your soul, your soul contract, basically. So it is, I guess you can say that. So your soul contract is saying, I've experienced a lot, South Node in Pisces, up here okay two degrees in Pisces is not visible of course um, and now I'm experiencing north node in Virgo so south node in Pisces is you're used to having you have natural abilities because you're used to it in past lifetimes to um, be open flexible adaptive um, understanding compassionate intuitive highly intuitive uh, very connected to the ether realms or something like that. Um, very good at listening. You're very like heart-centered. You're very like able to sense what people need and also sacrifice. But see, that's the thing. You've been sacrificing too much in the past. So now it's not time to sacrifice. It's time to get things done. It's time to work on things for your own, towards your own journey um, by having still having servitude but this case it's still focused on the self um it's still a bit on the self because it's you know Vir virgo comes after leo so there is that there's an the aspect of the self and growth in that and seeing because leo has a lot of energy leo is ruled by the sun so there's a lot of energy there's a lot of room to give so now it's time to give but it's still working on yourself it's still servitude it's servitude but it's still uh working towards your own as a purity and we talked about this where virgo is about purity virgo is about uh, uh it's kind it's basically kind of like vesta also is associated with virgo chiron is actually well so because virgo is all about this is all about the hard work all, yes discipline or, yeah you can say that it's all about uh, yeah, servitude, it's all about volunteering, it's all about um, perfection, uh, it's all about being technical, scientific as well, um, but procedural, methodical, those kind of things. So now it's time to kind of figure out what that means for you as I blow my nose here. So, uh, um, in any case, so Virgo in that case is all and you want to be able to balance the two together so you have your natural abilities natural talents from your past lives and being able to sense things perceive things in a different way that's out of this world your idealism your so it goes and then learn how to express that and actually be more grounded with that grounding your intuition grounding your experiences grounding your compassion by showing probably others like what's a more practical way of having those abilities or what's a more practical way of healing what's a more practical way of being more creative and Pisces is also being creative music as well dance anything to do with magic as well you know want to ground that and use more practical things so um, because it's in the third house it has a lot to do with probably your taking for granted skills things that you probably know you have but you're just like oh it's not that important right, but actually it is so whatever your take your grant your your skills are in this case now see it reflects back your skills whether they're natural or acquired skills in this life you have used those skills and to help others but also to help yourself because it's about Virgo is not only about that purity thing Virgo is about um, showing the world or showing yourself that it's there's something to be had when it comes to being factual being um, 
procedural, being technical, because when you put order in something, it's kind of like you're taking things little by little. You know, this Pisces is both ruled by, both ruled by both Jupiter and uh, Neptune, right? But the Jupiter part of Pisces is that it's it's expansive, but with Virgo, it's trying to say be careful. Uh, if you look at it from a, an astronomical, semi-astronomical point of view, that you have this Chiron ruled Virgo, which I believe it rules Virgo, um, and Mercury as well. It's all about fact, factual things, but working with the matter that comes. You know, remember I told you Chiron is it, it's, it travels between uh, Saturn and Uranus. So Chiron bridges the matter with antimatter, so to speak, or dismatter, I don't know, uh, against matter, or reverse matter, I don't know what you want to call it, but the point is, is it's it going with that experience and wounding and seeing where that that suffering can, go, can lead into, how can you use your pain towards gift, by using that, like, ah, okay, so if you've, used, you've been able to use your sacrifice self so that you can now show others, like, Hey, wait a second. You know, maybe you don't have to sacrifice. You know, or in just like you don't have to sacrifice yourself. You just have to do enough to serve others, but 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 through like information, through practical means as well. It's a combined thing. Mercury, the so information sort of thing, is communicative, all those things. With Chiron, probably also Vesta. So, it's that whole uh, connecting with people through communication and but practical communication. Mercury is actually technically practical. Communication. It's not like Uranus. But anyways, so those natural gifts that you had, so now you want to give it forward, pay it forward. And I don't know if you've heard that phrase. Or it's from a movie. So, um, in any case, yeah. So working with those, finding the facts, figuring out, being uh, expressing studiousness, expressing uh, this ability to work hard, because, you know, maybe working hard might be a little too much, you know, because you're used to being comfortable with... Your, your son is in, uh, is in, uh, what's in uh, Sagittarius right here. So you're used to having things done intuitively. It gives you energy, all those things, like we talked about before. We have, you know, and you have the moon in Scorpio, so it's all very intuitive. It's all very intuitive. But now it's time to say, oh, let's kind of get out of the skies for a second and ground ourselves and balance that the horizontal plane this level of existence where we're in appreciate that and figure what can you bring from the ether and the cosmos down here so that you can actually help others that's a general <laughs> general gist of it uh, what else is there so for, this is kind of very important, I think. If you follow your north node, you'll start to balance, and you balance those two north-south node and north node together. Yeah. Because north node is ruled by Mercury, because Mercury rules Virgo, and so is Chiron up here. Again, that's my thing. <laughs> um, then you'll know how to work with that. You know how to balance what you're comfortable with, with what the the pain you're pain that you can transmute, the pain that you can, you know, and you can do that, you can transmute things, you have this, this natural habit, you know, and you can actually really do that, when I say really do that, it's because, because the moon, the nodes are moon's nodes, it represents, it actually tells me right away that it's like, hey, you can do that, because your moon was in Scorpio, okay, so, work on those, and work on also communication, being more self-expressive, being a little more action-oriented, um, physical action, like physical, material-oriented, and work with that. It doesn't mean that you abandon your south node stuff. You don't let it go. It means that you work with the two and kind of heading towards, because you don't want to, the tail doesn't move forward. It's not the one that moves forward. It's the one that follows, right? So that's the tail of the dragon. The head of the dragon is the north node. It's the one that seeks toward, it's forward, it's forward moving, it's forward thinking, you guys could say that. All those things. Okay. It has part of fortune here, which is part of fortune is um I don't know how to explain part of fortune. It's like it's apparently where you not just physically fortunate, but things that are that you do well in. I'm gonna consult this little 
thing here. So part of fortune, this is where I kind of cheat a little bit. So part of fortune is a part is where you Okay, so the sign it's in is where your talents and abilities are expressed naturally. So talents, um, it works well with third house too because it's like taken taken for granted skills. So talents as well kind of applies to in this house as well because that's where it is. But part of fortune is skills and talents expressed. In in Virgo, it's expressed um, for being technical. You actually have this ability. Because even though you have North South Node in Pisces, you can actually analyze it. But now it's time to ground it. Okay? Because it's in conjunct. You have North Node conjunct part of fortune. So that means it's that's your part that's where your talents will be also realized. So work with those. Being analytical, more technical, scientific, fact based, grounded, but still honing in the gifts of intuition and instinct as well because you have the moon in Scorpio okay um, yeah so this was for you it's more like learning in the house, third house it's more about learning so but this could also mean like a sort of a teaching not position you know teaching like anything that you're teaching the world teaching doesn't have to be like an actual title or skill or it's not about that it's about the it's about that it's about the doing well really it's the being Right, as Eckhart says, it's the being. So yeah, in any case, so work with those two and you'll see that actually you can balance the two together. South node with north node. Um, what else is there? Oh, I wanted to add here, Pallas Athena. So we have Pallas Athena in 23 degrees. Pallas Athena is the, it's kind of like Chiron, where it's the wisdom from pain, but in this case, it's like, more like innate wisdom. So yeah, when you get download things, it's like for you, it's in 23 degrees Aquarius, um, which actually is in perfect conjunction with your Uranus in Scorpio. Perfect conjunction. That means perfect means like 23, 23. Okay. I, I, I ignore the minutes in this case. And don't worry about the minutes. That's something else. <laughs> So anyway, so it's a perfect conjunction, which is uh, not sorry, not a conjunction. It's a square. It's a perfect square. So that means that um, your the sudden changes you experience through your fifth house, namely through your fifth house, it can change, um, but mainly th mainly through your fifth house, the whole like changes in in your environment when it comes to relationship, children, uh, recreational activities, creativity, things that give you joy, fun, and excitement even sex romantic relationship like i said um you'll find the wisdom in those changes by accepting that you know when you have Pallas athena in aquarius it means that you are able to work with the actual well the actual sudden changing unexpected right it's the iq okay so in this case now see now it ties back to the whole like fact faint fact Fact or being fact oriented, your North Node being Virgo, being um, informational, being more practical, being more grounded. Uh, so uh, you can be. Does um, you can be a public speaker? Hmm. I don't know. Probably because it's more social. It is Aquarius, so it's more about society. It's in the ninth house, so higher education, business ventures. Uh, very Sagittarian, Jupiterian sort of stuff. So the ninth house is higher education, um, religion probably, or faith, or organization, or church as an organization. Um, so anything with like, soup, it's also called the super conscious. So that means anything that isn't just knowledge, but like beyond knowledge. And so you find the wisdom in those things by being able to innovate and action, which is like Aquarius and being able to uh, be okay with it by trusting that it's like, ah, sudden changes, sudden, oh, sudden knowledge, oh, sudden wisdom. It's in there, you gotta do it, just tap into it. I personally, because if you wanna be more grounded, I would say do things that are grounding. Work on your lower chakras instead of the upper chakras. Lower chakras, so work with darker colors, so 
black is very grounding. It's your earth chakra is way down there. I don't know what the other chakras are. I have yet to go into about chakras. But yeah, down there. Or lower chakras, even like your red. Red colors. Go into red. Uh, wear like, I wear gemstones. That, well, I don't have it right now. But gemstones that are red, orange, yellow. Ground yourself in that section. But I would say probably more of the black. Go with black. You do like black colors. You do like, you enjoy dark colors. But embrace that and see, figure out what you can work with it. But definitely work on things that are grounding. He eat healthier things. You know, Virgo, if you have North Node and it also means that you eat more healthily. You can be more natural. You know, Virgo is Earth, so it's uh, definitely attached to more natural. So instead of um, getting into things like medicine, like you know, artificial things, go with some things that are more natural. I, I probably think you already do that. I'm not sure. But yeah, so grounding yourself, being able to do that will help you sort of feel like, okay, I I don't have to have this much of a nervous feeling. I don't know if you get the nervous energy like I do, but I don't think you do, not really. Because you, maybe, because Moon in Scorpio is quite sensitive to energies, but it's not necessarily nervous. Um, but you have, you do have that sort of uh, wisdom that you get from the ether, you know, higher education. So um, that's where Pallas Athena is concerned because it's higher wisdom, higher, it's IQ, it's, in, it's higher intelligence, it's higher knowledge, higher, yes, also wisdom, things that come all of a sudden, like, whoa, where did that come from, right? I want to see if Pallas Athena is in actually a square. Squares are very important because they keep, they make us, you know, they keep us they keep us on our toes. They keep us on our feet. They're, we're always on our toes, and it's just like, oh, okay. Um, Twenty-three. So besides that, all I can see is that oh, it's also perfect conjunction, perfect sextile with your sun. So naturally, you'll be able to figure out what gives you vitality, what gives you energy. We're going back to the sun here for some reason because of Pallas Athena. You're able to use that as a potential to work with things that are not of this plane, right? Especially when you go into higher education. You don't, remember we talked about this a little bit, you don't have to study anything. You just have to, well, I don't know, take it from me, I guess. You can just acquire it by experiencing it. And that's where Virgo comes in again. It's not just, it's not knowledge for the sake of knowledge. It's knowledge for experience, through experience, for experience and through experience. And more, right? So, yeah, so you're able to work with that. Use your intuitive abilities to see where you need to go and then kind of figure out how you can put it in writing, put it in words. Even you want to balance artistry, right? You want to balance artistry with practicality. So, uh, and I, we talked about this, about I said that I created like a bunch of different writing systems. I don't know, maybe that's, you know, but that's more of an artistic side. For you, it's more about the knowledge or something like that. Look up, look at things that will help you at the same time help others so that it's practical but at the same time gives you also that knowledge to say that, hey, to, I mean, to, to knowledge so that it gets to the point where it's like, ah, I can teach this. But don't wait for it to be, of course, you know, something that you teach. It's something that you could actually do right now, right? Um, so yeah, look up those things, rounding things that will help you more to keep you more centered. Um, not just meditation, but try the Wim Hof method. It's more natural because you're working with your breath and you're working with Mother Nature. So it is definitely more of that stuff. So that one you can get into. You can balance it with other things that like we talked about. I, I, I suggested also try tarot reading because it's like, or palmistry even. Tarot reading, palmistry, numerology. You can combine those three as well. Or you can go into astrology as well. You can do what I'm doing here. And you can actually use the facts, but at the same time, more intuitively. Astrology isn't that intuitive compared to, let's say, like tarot. Because tarot, you really get, you listen in. But you're still getting facts. You're still learning on the way. So, because in, in tarot, when you're going doing the cards, some people literally study and memorize the card. For me, at the very least, in what I believe in, that doesn't work. Because it doesn't go, it doesn't, you don't really remember, you kind of have to, you know, but experience. 
use experience as a way to remember. And we talked about what I do when it comes to acquisition, when it comes to languages. I do those things. So you can even do what like what I've been doing, something that I feel like isn't my path anymore. My north node is in Leo. Um, I do languages more for myself rather than to teach others. Um, you can get into languages, acquire languages, you know, like I, the way I told you, right? So you can do many, many, many things that will help the world. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be completely idealistic. Like, you know, you have your Pisces and South Node. It doesn't have to be that far off. It can just be grounded. It can be grounded. It can be quite simple. Because helping others doesn't necessarily mean that they have to achieve a certain sort of enlightenment or they have to... You know, they, you can be there just by being there. Look at look at look up uh, Eckhart's stuff and just being there and just being in the present moment, and just allowing your attention to go back to the body, and saying, "Okay, here is this moment. Surrender to the moment. Give over to the moment. Not thinking about the end goal of the future." So that's where your natural gifts can come in, but at the same time, you're grounding it and not overthinking things. So there's a balance between your south and your north node. Okay, so um, I believe that I mentioned something else. Ah, yes, that the because your north node is was in Virgo, and Mercury rules Virgo, and also uh, and also Chiron. So I would say there would probably be well. There's already comparable placement. We talked about this where there's this Chiron here. But then we go back, we go here, and we see that Chiron is also in trying to your North Node. So that means you're able to work through that sacredness, that, that devotion to your own pain, and work through it as part of your path. And you can actually show this to other people as you work through it. Remember, you don't have to wait. Um, but at the same time, you have North Node square Mercury right here. Okay. And your snout on. So you have another like seesaw thing effect. Sorry, there's construction going on. If you hear that, that's not me. <laughs> um, so there's a south node here. Where is that? Two degrees probably here. Okay, so there's a sort of little triangle going on here. There's two, two. I'm just going to generally. Okay, so there's that thing going on there. Okay, so it's balancing being able to communicate and learning how to express what to express and trusting does intuitive intuition that comes in that we talked about and seeing that where does it lead me to right? just because it's you have north node in virgo does not mean that you could call completely scientific and forget the intuition all that stuff like I, and i said i already said this right? so it's about balancing that stuff and using that pull of mercury in what information how am i communicating with anyone anything and anywhere okay it's there's no limits to that and yet you can balance that by saying mm, take it step by step step by step step by step practical and not to not this way not this way does that make sense i hope it does so anyways uh, what else is there? So that's the basically the gist of it. This has been a long, exciting, and like fun video. I hope that this has helped you. Um, it was great to actually be have this like opportunity to actually go through all this and really, yeah, contribute in this case because this is also fun for me. For me, it's also a creative thing. In any case, uh, for those who have been watching this, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> in the lighting but you know it's, it's I don't want too much lighting right now it's just my thing right now but you know anyways <laughs> overthinking that's my self mode <laughs> anyways, good job everyone uh, for just being you thank you and when I say good job I think it just came from because I used to teach it <laughs> but in any case thank you so much for watching if you have any comments or, or questions whatever put down in the comments below and thank you, Carl, for volunteering. I'll see you guys later. Toodles, ta-ta, and au revoir.